Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, we got a bunch of interesting things going on. First off, a heads up, and this is coming from Mark S. Gilarducci, and so he is the director of the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services and Homeland Security Advisor to Governor Edmund Brown. Heads up, much of Northern and Southern California are under red flag warning over the next 24 to 72 hours. High winds, low humidities, be prepared, have a plan. That's the motto that we go by, right? Stay informed and listen to authorities. If told to evacuate, do it. Remember, ready, set, go. And so just a warning about the fire potential. And we have a campfire near Chico, California, and it spread to 5,000 acres. Thousands were evacuated. And so this started up yesterday, and um, it's raging out of control, growing rapidly to over 5,000 acres. And as we can see here, pretty imp impressive blaze. So everybody in the area, definite heads up. There's a video here for you guys to check out as well. And it's uh, on the Skyway in Paradise, California. So be very aware out there, our California people. We have this article talking about tidal flooding also contributing to Chesapeake Bay pollution. And uh, as well, we also, we know down in uh, South and North Carolina because of the hurricane and then all the runoff from the rivers just pouring and polluting on in the waters and of course we also have the red tide that's been going ongoing um, down in Florida and actually still expanding so we see a lot of different um, polluting effects and just horrible conditions in our waterways it's very very sad and scientists have begun researching an understudied source of Chesapeake Bay pollution which is tidal flooding the Virginian pilot reported last week that flooding driven by ocean tides often drag trash and other waste into the nation's largest estuary. Tidal flooding greatly affects areas around coastal Virginia, including large cities like Norfolk. Old Dominion University professor Margaret Mulholland said she's seen receding floodwaters pull in tipped over garbage bins, basketballs, and human waste. Yeah, and you know, it's it's not even just there. It, it, this is a big problem everywhere as waste from Haiti, the Dominican Republic has, has even made its way into um, down around Miami and Naples and the Everglades areas. Uh, it's, it's a bad situation just overall globally and getting worse all the time. We really need to, to reel these things in, but unfortunately, we never seem to take these things serious enough. Early season tropical cyclone Alcide, 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 I guess, or maybe it's Alcide, forms near Madagascar. And so this one formed on November 6 as the first named storm of the 2018 19 Southwest Indian Ocean cyclone season. So over the next 48 hours, this system strengthened into a Category 3 hurricane, hurricane equivalent already. Its formation comes nine days before the official start of the season, which runs through April 30th. So does that sound kind of foreboding and very similar to what we saw in the Northern Pacific as well? Starting early and right away, boom, first storm goes up to major hurricane status. So yeah, we do know the weather has changed. It's gotten far more severe. Haverford West and Salva flooding amid weather warnings. And this is our friends over in the UK. Several roads across Pembrokeshire are flooded amid weather warnings. More heavy rain could be on the way. In the county, uh, Merlin's Brook and Haverford West and Salva have flood warnings, meaning flooding is expected in place. A further fl 10 flood alerts, meaning flooding is possible, are in place across Wales. And we have a body found in West Coast River as spring storm causes flooding and closes major roads. Now this is down in New Zealand. So yeah, you know, every corner that we look at of the globe, we do see the same issues taking place. And you know, again and again and again, we're seeing people get swept away with flash flooding. And look at what it did to this bridge. 
you know, this is not a hurricane. This is not a cyclone. This is not a tornado. This is just flash flooding, which is you know, showing how powerful it can be. This roadway and this bridge is just twisted like nothing. And so we have another poor unfortunate person that's just swept away in the flooding. And um, we have to be extra cautious, extra vigilant. And there is a video here for you guys to go through as well. And this is our friends and family down in New Zealand. So there is so much buzz going on right now about biblical signs and it's it's obvious why because you know we have all sorts of signs going on and um, you know I've been a student of the Bible since I was a little kid like I said it started out with me when I was um, six well, almost six years old and my brother had passed and so it started my quest and read the Bible from cover to cover when I was 11 for the first time and read it again cover to cover that same year and started uh, Bible studies and then again in my early 20s I was going to three Bible studies a week as well as two services um, so yeah I was huge huge and, and, and the prophecies are all still in the head you can't get rid of them uh, but also the prophecies of Nostradamus Casey and you know all these other other sources as well and as well as you know different ones from around the world as I'm actually currently revisiting that and I've, I've studied all the ones from around the world as well everything I could think of and there's always new things that keep popping up but the internet and YouTube is a buzz with the signs and everything going on and then you have some major names uh, talking about it now we've had people talk about dates before do you guys know Harold Camping uh, in case you don't basically a, a preacher I used to listen to him all the time as well as Charles Stanley and so many others and uh, David Jeremiah um, you know read, read so many of tons of books on this on all of these subjects um, but now we are we are seeing for one we're seeing a lot of flat earthers that are, are coming out of um, you know they're Bible believers and they're believing that we're in the tribulation for the most part and you know yeah the signs are kind of undeniable because they are there although we can't take a lot of the signs and they could apply to different time frames as well if we really wanted to uh, but right here this is out of the Inquisitor the end of the world is nigh and Bible scholars believe this freaky trio of signs proves it so are the four horsemen of the apocalypse about to saddle up and pay us a visit Three unusual and freaky signs have emerged in the past few months, which have convinced some that biblical prophecies about the end of the world and the second coming of Christ are only a stone's throw away. Since time began, people have obsessed with the end of the world. Over the years, many predictions concerning the apocalypse have fallen flat on their face as the world wakes up, yawns, stretches, and goes about the business of yet another day. However, more and more people are convinced the end, end times are actually, well, will actually begin in 2021. And the mirror reports that they believe the following signs prove it. Some believe that it was 2017 that it started with the first e uh, eclipse. Others say the um, the sign of the woman from Revelation, you know, which was in September of 2017. First, we have to read of the recent birth of a red heifer, 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 <laughs> in Israel. Holy cow! You might cry. What's so shocking of the birth of a red heifer? Well. They've been a regular fe feature in end times predictions since the dawn of creation. Apparently, the red calf brings the promise of reinstating biblical purity to the world. And it's said before the construction of the third temple in Jerusalem can take place, a red cow should be born and then sacrificed. Mainstream Orthodox Judaism states that's because of the two previous temples having been destroyed, a third one would need to be rebuilt before the coming of the Jewish Messiah. Some theologians believe the building of the third temple also foreshadows Judgment Day or Armageddon. Breaking Israel News reports that a board of rabbis has said a red heifer without blemish has been born and fulfills the requirement of prophecy. Second up, we have a fish spotted in the Dead Sea. So what's so unusual about fish swimming in the Dead Sea, you ask? Well, it's what they do after all, right? Uh, here's the rub. The Dead Sea's high salinity makes it a notoriously no-go area for fish and marine life. Hence... 
how the Dead Sea got its rather unattractive name, yet scientists claim that fish have been found in abundance in the Dead Sea sinkholes. Israeli photojournalist Noam Bedin told Breaking Israeli News that the body of water is anything but dead and claimed it was the eighth wonder of the world. He added, a place was once cursed in biblical times, now you could come here to Dead Sea, explore the sinkholes and see fish where the water has receded. Fulfilling prophecies from Ezekiel, who talked about the land flourishing and blooming when the Jews return. Ezekiel is a priest and a prophet who appeared in the Old Testament and predicted the Dead Sea will flourish into life during the end times. According to Ezekiel 47, 8 through 9, there shall be a very great multitude of fish. And thirdly, we have the return of the serpent. The slithering snake was spotted crawling out of the stones of Israel's western wall last week interrupted prayers and unsettled many worshippers. The appearance of a reptile emerging from one of Judaism's holiest sites had led many theorists to making wild leaps of faith and drawing parallels with the serpent that tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. According to the Yannette Yannet, uh, news site, the snake probably escaped its hiding place in an attempt to fatten itself up for the winter months. Others claim it's a sure sign the earth is going to hell in a handcart. And so this is not it, though. I mean, we, we have over here, and of course, this is the Express, which, you know, is taken with a grain of salt. But, you know, this is Paul Begley, and Paul Begley has a lot of followers, a ton of followers. You know, so many of you guys are always sending me his videos and saying, check this out, check that out, check this out, check that out. And so fears of the world coming to the end were fueled when prominent Christian pastor Paul Begley claimed three asteroids headed past Earth were prophesied in the Bible. So, and there there are, um, and I, I still can't remember it. Yeah, you know, there's, I forget exactly where. There was another prophecy of three asteroids, and I want to say two of them hit in the Atlantic, and I forget where the third one hit, maybe somewhere in the Pacific, and um, caused tsunamis. And so, you know, anytime I see an asteroid zipping by, to me, it still comes back into my mind because of these prophecies. And I don't think it was a Nostradamus one. I don't even think it was Casey. It was somebody else a little bit more um, obscure. But anyway, the biblical conspiracist who preaches the end of the world prophecies from West Lafayette in Indiana believes the last days are here. Pastor Bagley bizarrely claimed the arrival of three asteroids which will zip past the Earth on Saturday, November 10th, is one of the many warning signs foretold in biblical scripture. He believes the three asteroids will arrive on the third day of five waves of energy washing over the planet, an event which he says could be more than a mere coincidence. And I have to admit, like listening to him, it's very easy to find him interesting. See, he, he is interesting because he... He talks about Nibiru and Planet X, and uh, he talks about a lot of things happening, you know, geopolitically as well. So he says they're not going to hit us. They shouldn't. They're going to come close, and they're coming the same weekend of the third wave of the five waves of energy. Now, 40 fireballs broke through Earth's atmosphere last night. So what's going on here? The firebrand preacher claims something ugly is happening in the heavens and suggested it could be the wrath of God. Paul Begley's dire biblical warnings come after astero NASA's asteroid trackers said three large asteroids will swing past the planet over the weekend. All three of the space rocks measure anywhere between 24.9 feet and 98.42 feet in diameter. So those are all substantial, um, for sure. You don't want any of those hitting the planet. The closest of the asteroids will approach the Earth from just 237,037 miles, which is marginally closer than the moon is. Yeah, I think the moon's 240, so it's it's basically 1 AU, which is usually nothing to be scared of. We had some come by at like 0.03 AU recently, which is something to be nervous about. Thankfully, that one, though, was small, and it would have probably caused minimal damage, if, if any at all. These, however, could cause major damage if they do come down. Um, but in AU, one astronomical unit is, um, well, we should be good. <laughs> we should be good. Of course, you never know. And, you know, the thing is, too, are there smaller ones coming with them? Because a lot of times these other ones, they sneak up on people as well. 
And, you know, actually, uh, it reminds me again of Dave Dobbs. And uh, if you haven't checked out Dave Dobbs' channel yet, please do. Because he was talking about how we are going to be right in the tail of Nibiru, basically, uh, come December. So we're going to see, like, massive, um, massive storms of, of meteors coming in that's going to freak people out. And so, you know, definitely check out uh, Dave Dobbs as well. So, Pastor Begley says, I'm not in charge of how God's going to shake the heavens. I'm supposed to just tell you he's going to shake the heavens. And when people say, well, I don't believe he's going to shake the heavens, then I say, okay, well, here's what some of the scientists say could cause it. As a matter of fact, here's what's already happened in the, in the past in Exodus chapter 9. When fire mingled with hail and hailstones fell on earth, and the fire rang along the earth, creating chaos. That's already what happened once, and it's going to happen again. Probably, he says. So, and then he says, if you read Revelation, it tells you it will. If you read Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, if you read 2 Peter chapter 3, you know that 2 Peter says the earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. The preacher claimed the asteroids and waves of energies passing over the earth are all signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. He said people need to be saved and people need to be ready because we are truly living in the last days. Can you say amen? Astronomers, however, have no fear of any road asteroids currently headed on a collision course with the Earth. And astronomer Matija Cook, University of British Columbia in Canada, said it's highly unlikely that a regional or global destruction would occur anytime soon, next couple of centuries, since we've already discovered most of the near-Earth asteroids larger than one kilometer, and none of them seem to be heading this way. A localized impact has less than a percent chance to happen in any given year, so the level of risk at any given place or time is low. Pastor Bailey famously preached this year's July blood moon lunar eclipse was a biblical warning sign proph prophesized in the book of Revelation. And over here, again, this is more on, on Pastor Bailey. And he's warning of a rogue star that could be a sign of planet X apocalypse. As he talks about the mythical Nibiru. And planet X, sometimes known as Nibiru or Wormwood, is supposed to be a celestial body bound on a cataclysmic orbit with our home world. Purveyors of planet X cataclysm conspiracy theory believe the planet is 10 times the size of Earth and orbits the sun every 3,600 years. You know, that's according to Sitchin. That's not everybody uh, as well, so they're kind of generalizing here. Pastor Bagley has now claimed astronomers may have uncovered a rogue star passing Earth thousands of years ago, and this could be the mythical Nibiru. Biblical conspiracists said, is this Nibiru? Is it Planet X? You know why we even have this story? Why even bring this up unless it's part of the Planet X disclosure? Scientists have recently found evidence of a wandering star zipping past our home planet more than 70,000 years ago. Yeah, there's been a lot of stuff trickling out this year. All sorts of stuff trickling out. Any ancient Neanderthals who looked at, at the skies during that celestial encounter would have seen a, a faint red dwarf star appear at night. This chance encounter between the Earth and the star is evident of some of the most bizarre and erratic orbital movements of the most distant objects barreling around the sun. One theory suggests that the gravity of the so-called planet 9 beyond the fringes of the solar system is affecting the orbits of other objects. And another theory proposed in a study published in February this year suggests that a small red dwarf star some 20 light years away could have passed Earth hundreds of centuries ago. Mr. Begley, however, uh, who believes humans have only been on Earth for 6,000 years, claims scientists might have just discovered evidence of the planet Nibiru. He said, is this the soft disclosure we've been told? There's a planet number nine they call the dwarf star. We've already been called by the ancients Nibiru. We've known it as planet X for about 70 years, and then it was just called the goblin two weeks ago. I mean, what are we talking about here? Put it all aside. The Bible probably tells you what we should call it, wormwood. According to Pastor Begley, the Nibiru or Wormwood apocalypse is prophesied in the book of Revelation, chapter 8. And the book of Revelation talks about the end of the world and the passage of Wormwood. It's really the end of the age. Um, and a passage in question reads, And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of parts of the water became Wormwood. 
and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And scientists and astronomers, however, do not believe in the existence of the apocalyptic planet. NASA said Nibiru and other stories about wayward planets are an internet hoax. There's no factual basis for these claims. The U.S. Space Agency stressed there are no astronomical observations to support the claims of Nibiru's existence. So, you know, the question is, do you trust NASA? And so, we do have this beautiful purple sky that seems to be getting seen in more places all the time. And uh, we did see it down in Florida. We've seen it in Ohio, uh, yeah, October 13th over here in Ohio. And there's some videos where you guys check it out. Very similar color, uh, two different locations in Ohio, Cuyahoga River in Ohio and Cleveland, and then Dayton, Ohio. Another video from Cleveland, Bellevue, Washington, October 31st. And then Wisconsin on uh, November 4th. And so what's up with the uh, changes in the sky? We have definitely seen a lot of strange sky phenomena that actually gets you to question just about anything. <laughs> so Goffin's cockatoos can create and manipulate novel tools. And just, just how intelligent are some of these uh, birds and some of these animals? I think way more intelligent than what people give them credit for. And I had a, um, a parrot, his name was Stormy, and he was amazingly intelligent and affectionate. And um, again, you know, there, there's so much really going on in so many different animals' heads and hearts that perhaps most of humanity doesn't recognize. And so these are very smart birds. And you know, exhibits the ability to go ahead and use tools to get treats. And yeah, you know, this is not the only animal this has been done with. Obviously, monkeys. Uh, and you know, surprisingly, pigs are more intelligent than you would think as well. Now they got a record-setting 17-foot Burmese python that they caught in South Florida. And this was uh, a snake hunter. A snake hunter captured the female snake while on the South Florida Water Management District property in Miami-Dade. And it's one 17 feet 5 inches and weighed in at 120 pounds. And this is the third to be caught as part of the agency's python elimination program that measured more than 17 feet snake. So pretty, pretty darn big. Suicide spike on Monday mornings, according to a new study in Japan. Well, yeah, I could guess why. Couldn't you guys? Monday mornings? Monday morning blues? Look at that grind there. Look at how packed those trains are, all those people going off to work. Of course, Monday mornings would be the time when people would feel the most depressed. And that's a sign of our culture, you know, and just basically being wrapped up in, in nothing but that work mindset, you know, and have to achieve more and more and more. It's, uh, it's sad because, you know, we, we all should be doing stuff that we, we love and not something that we don't want to do. And, you know, be contributing into society in ways that are pleasurable for us. And it's just, it's just a sign of exactly how screwed up our society truly, truly is. So this study, um, the research explored 870,000 suicides between 1974 and 2014, 30-year span there. Or, yeah, 40-year span, I should say. Found that the day and time of the people that chose to take their lives fluctuated depending on gender, age, and economic climate. The study revealed that the number of men aged between 40 and 65 who committed suicide at the start of the week was 1.55 times higher than on Saturdays. Researchers also discovered that the number of middle-aged men committing suicide on a Monday morning peaked when the economy was weak, with rates dropping during the more stable economic periods. Meanwhile, the majority of men took their own lives before leaving for work in the morning rather than during their commute with hanging and gas poisoning emerging as the most common causes of death. You know, and if we're killing ourselves because we hate what we do and can't face going to work, 
or face you know stock market losses and stuff then there is something seriously screwed up with the society just in general and in total it needs to be totally revamped massive black hole spectacular spin may rotate space around it that's a pretty cool uh, picture there so we have a massive black hole that's spinning so fast that it tests the limits of Einstein's theory of relativity and may rotate space around itself, according to a joint study by India's Astrostat and NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The black hole in question is roughly 10 times the mass of the sun, and only one of five with an accurately measured spin rate this fast, close to the speed of light. India's first dedicated astronomy satellite, Astrostat, launched back in 2015, observed the frenetic pace of the black hole with findings later confirmed by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. Scientists measure black holes in terms of their mass, or their spin rate, which ranks on a scale of 0 to 1. This black hole in the binary star system of 4U 1630-47 has been cloaked at a phenomenal rate of 0.9, in other words, very close to the limit set by Einstein's theory of relativity. The incredible void might also provide the key to understanding how galaxies form. And we have um, this going on as well, and this is positive. Yoga and meditation on the rise among U.S. kids and adults. More Americans are turning to forms of complementary medicine, such as yoga, meditation, and chiropractors, according to the CDC. And more than 30% of U.S. adults and about 12% of children youth use healthcare approaches that are not typically part of conventional medical care, or that may have origins outside of us usual Western practices. Complementary medicine is when these practices are used along conventional medicine. Many people turn to complementary health approaches like yoga and meditation in order to help set up with symptom management, such as pain. As well, they turn to these approaches for a general sense of well-being. And you know, we know these things are, are tremendously beneficial as they get you out of the fight or flight system. And so they allow your body to start to rest and recuperate and produce all the feel good hormones. It, it's just a very obvious basic thing. And so the practice of yoga rose from 3.1% of the overall child population in 2012 to 8.4% in 2017 and from 9.5% to 14.3 in adults, equating to about 4.9 million children and 35.2 million adults doing yoga in 2017. Meditation use went up from 0.6% of children in 2012 to 5.4% in 2015, 2017, and from 4.1% of adults in 2012 to 14.2% in 2017. So those are huge jumps in just five years, which is awesome because that's going to actually lead to a lot healthier people, a lot more stable people as well. And the use of chiropractors in children stayed essentially the same, <clears throat> and there was a small difference for adults. More females are, are doing yoga in both age groups uh, compared to boys. Meditation and chiropractors were more popular with the adult women surveyed, but in children the rates between boys and girls were similar. So that is a healthy uh, trend. And then, yes, it is possible interspecies love can exist. And so this mule and this emu, well, they found the real thing. They are in love. And it's beautiful. So rescued six-foot emu and feisty donkey are in love, creating trouble for North Carolina shelter. A boy donkey and a girl emu have apparently fallen in love and the relationship created a problem for one of Charlotte's best known animal shelters. The odd pair, emus are similar to ostriches. They are so closely bonded that they're refusing to leave each other's side, says Jennifer Gordon of Carolina Waterfowl Rescue outside of Charlotte. They like to cuddle and to even sleep together, Gordon told the Charlotte Observer. We can't separate them. So we need someone who is willing to adopt both a donkey and an emu. And that may not be easy. Rescuers made the mistake of trying to separate them once. The five foot five, five, foot five donkey started crying and the six foot tall emu got frantic and paced around like an expectant father, she says. They're now being kept in the same enclosure 
as they wait an adoption that she predicts will likely never come. How did this affair, love affair happen? Loneliness, Gordon guesses. The emu and the donkey have been comforting each other, possibly for years, on a few acres in Kershaw, South Carolina. When the owner suddenly vanished last week, the two were left behind along with a bunch of dogs, cats, and chickens. Carolina Waterfowl Rescue took the animals in on Monday with the intention of finding homes for all of them. And so Gordon fears the rescue operation will have to keep the donkey and the emu indefinitely. The site has already, uh, already has three other donkeys, but it turns out the newly arrived donkey doesn't like them. He'd rather be with the emu. When we put him in with the other donkeys, he attacked them. The campaign, a campaign has been launched on Facebook to name the pair and it tries to raise money for their food and medical bills. Nearly 100 names have been suggested since Monday. Carolina Waterfowl Rescue, a nonprofit, is in the midst of raising 150000 to move from its current 11-acre site to a 50-acre farm near Waxhaw, where large animals can be kept. And so to contact the shelter, call 704-668-9486. And somehow I feel like I've known about this couple before, and I did live in Kershaw County, South Carolina, um, for several years. And somehow, I don't know if it was a friend that told me about this, these animals. But uh, love hits in all mysterious ways, does it not? So my friends, as always, please thumbs up to support the channel. Go ahead and subscribe and click the bell. Get all the updates and share with as many people as possible. Let's wake people up to what's happening in our world. And let's work together and plan together and become a strong, cohesive family together. As always, I look forward to your comments. God bless my friends and namaste.